Hey YouTube, never ending student here. A brief video on uh, basically something that isn't as well covered in electronics as some other things. Uh, so here we have an auction purchase from I don't know, a long time ago. Um, it's just been sitting in storage and unprocessed. And I've recently wanted to get a frequency counter and I actually have a couple of frequency counters. They are very, very old units, and they don't have the range that I want, but they're what I have on hand right now and are usable for the ranges they're in. So, uh, what we have here is uh, an ancient BK Precision Dynascan Corporation, back when that was part of the name officially, uh, 175 megahertz universal counter. It's in kind of bad physical shape. It's been banged around. Pieces have been broken off. Uh, it does appear to work, though. But that's not really what the video is about. Now, uh, over here we have a vector signal generator. It's putting out a 10 megahertz signal. And currently I have that on my scope. Uh, just, you know, for independent verification. Uh, the signal generator actually does need maintenance. But uh, it is functional. There you can see, you know, 10 megahertz, 9.999. Anyway. Something I didn't think to get on camera before, there we go, uh, was when I first plugged that in, you know, who knows if it works, because, you know, it's banged up, it's ancient. Uh, I plugged it in, and, you know, I put my signal in there. Now, that's giving a nice, reasonably clean 10 point, you know, zero, 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 and a bit. It's not perfect. Uh, obviously, whatever crystal is in there is quite old. But, you know, that's functional. Uh, it's not to the standard I would like for my lab, but, yeah, certainly serviceable. That's not the kind of reading I was initially getting. Initially this would pulse and touch on 10 megahertz or 9999 for a moment and then it would dip down to like the 8 megahertz or 5 megahertz range and then go back up and yeah I wasn't terribly surprised I was thinking okay so you know it's obviously been dropped uh, it has problems low hanging fruit first uh, for diagnostics do least invasive to most invasive, do easiest to hardest, do simplest to most complex. So what's the easiest, least time consuming thing to try first? This is the subject of this video. Cleaning. Uh, cleaning and various proper tools for it. So in the end, all I had to do there was blow out the, you know, literally just with my breath, uh, blow out the center conductor receiver pin, or, you know, a female receiver for the pin, and then take a fine brush, very gently rotate it around in there, and then Q-tip is definitely too big but I have these much narrower, smaller foam uh, cleaning tools that are kind of like Q-tips. They fill a similar role, but they get into tighter spaces, and that goes... Well, the tip of this is small enough to fit in and wiggle around inside that pin receiver. That's the, you know, center of that BNC connector. So, just half a minute of cleaning, going back and forth, between the uh, really small, like, I don't know, 1 or 1.5 millimeter, uh, you know, foam swab, and a brush, and blowing in it. And then, of course, uh, cleaning the pin very gently in the center of that, since I shoved it into a filthy port. Um, and after that, I put it back in, and... I get a clean count. That's it. 
Uh, so cleaning products and cleaning tools, not often or not as frequently discussed, but an absolutely vital tool in electronics lab because a lot of the time problems aren't complicated. Problems are often the low hanging fruit, especially for old stuff that's you know been stored uncovered and is filthy. Uh, sure, it got dropped and smashed a bit, but sometimes just cleaning something is the fix. Um, and just having the right tools, very, very cheap, disposable, or just very, very cheap tools like tiny little paintbrushes and tiny little foam swabs that cost a fraction of a cent are the correct tool for the job and just what you've got to do first. So, cleaning tools, cleaning materials, and, you know, as an extension, that proper chemicals for it. There are various sprays. Um, like, there's stuff like, you know, WD-40 Specialist Contact Cleaner, or if you're going to get into the expensive territory, the MG Chemicals 801 Bravo with PPE. Uh, don't go to the chemicals first. Simplest to com or complicated first. Easiest first. Low hanging fruit first. Because it can be easy to over focus on, well, obviously, it's broken and not working. It's obviously been dropped and smashed. I better take it apart and find where the bad component is. Go with the low-hanging fruit first. Do the simple stuff first. And the simple stuff is, are my contacts point, or contact points clean? Uh, are my connections good? Uh, something else that might have done this, you know, might have worked to fix it, is just to reseat my connections. Unplug and plug back in my connector a couple times. That will move the crap around. Now, ah, hey, there we go. I just undid it. So there's still dirt in there. And we just saw, uh, I kind of jiggled it around. It's making contact with the dirt again and therefore having not good contact. This is what I was seeing before. Uh, that jumping around. So... There you go. I'm really glad that happened and we were able to catch it and, you know, get it on camera. Because that's what it was doing. And then you saw me unplug, just blow a little more of the uh, dust out, plug it back in, and we're good. It, it's just dust and potentially also some metal oxidation in the BNC contact. Cleaning. <laughs>